Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on one part of the build, and that's the overlapping cupboard doors. When we were constructing the shower for our Sprinter conversion, on the front face of that shower cubicle, we needed to form two overlapping doors. Everywhere else in the van, I've used standard kitchen hinges, a soft closing type of hinge that we'd normally use in your kitchen cupboards. But for these overlapping doors, I've had to source a special hinge. It's called a flush fitting cranked hinge. I'll put a little picture up here and you'll see them in more detail when we get into the build. What it allows you to do is it allows you to make an oversized door that fits on the surface of your cabinet tree. And I thought it was worth just focusing one particular video just on how to build and fit those particular doors. So we're going to cover every aspect of making the door and fitting the hinges right from start to finish and I'm going to include every detail in that whole process. Before we get into the video I just want to make a quick announcement. I received an email yesterday from David and Lindsay of Quirky Campers to say that the tickets for next year's Camp Quirky go on sale to the general public on Monday the 22nd of October. It's a festival for self-build camper vans. So everybody that goes to the festival has basically built their own vehicle or in the process of building their own camper van. So there's no two vans the same, everyone is different. They've all got their own little characters and it's absolutely fantastic to go around, talk to everybody, have a look at their ideas, share ideas that you've got for your own van. And I've just found that, you know, this year's camp, everybody was so super friendly and welcoming and the whole vibe for the weekend was just terrific. You know, really enjoyed it and I can't recommend it enough. So if you're thinking of doing a van conversion or you're part way through or you've even completed your van, make sure you get your tickets for Camp Quirky next year because it's just an absolutely fantastic festival. We will be there obviously with our Sprinter conversion. So anybody that's been following the build, if you want to come and have a look at our van in more detail, right up close and personal, then we'll have the Sprinter on display for everyone to look at. And of course, it'll be absolutely fantastic to meet everybody. So please do make sure you get your tickets for Camp Quirky and do come along. Right, well, let's get into this little door build. This is the last section of wall for the shower cubicle. This is obviously where the front door is and the little door for the Thetford cassette toilet. You've seen me cut these ply panels before. I've simply used masking tape and then marked on top of that with a pencil and then I've cut these shapes with a jigsaw. Now what we need to do is cut the doors for these two openings. Let's start with this small little Thetford cassette door. I'm going to make an overlapping door for these so that means the door is going to sit on top of this panel and it's going to overlap by about 20 millimetres all the way around. What we've done during the course of the build is we saved all of the off cuts and scrap Sobrano. I didn't throw any of these bits away just in case I might need them. This is the piece that we cut out of that board and what we've done is we've found another board that matches this grain pattern exactly. So now what we can do out of this spare piece of Sobrano is we can cut another door 20mm bigger all the way around and then when we fit it to the shower wall the grain pattern is going to match right the way through. I know it's a minor detail, but little things like that will make the world of difference to the finished product. These are the hinges that we're going to be using for these overlapping doors. And what I've done is I've taken a couple of little scraps of Zebrano. I like to just make a little mock-up so I can better visualise how it's going to work. And I can also use this to take some dimensions off. So the way these work is this cranked part of the hinge wraps around the actual door frame so this is the shower cubicle wall. This edge will be trimmed with the PVC push-in trim. We'll cut a T-slot in here. And then what we'll do is we'll just cut the T-trim short where the hinge is. And then you can see the second part of the hinge is actually fixed to the inside of the door. And then it gives you about a 20 mil overlap all the way around the door frame. So the door will actually be sitting on the surface. And again, we'll trim this door with the PVC push-in trim and we'll cut a T-slot in the edge of this. And again, we'll just cut a little notch out of that PVC trim just where the, you know, the, the hinge part is. 
just sort of recess it around that trim. So from the outside, if you imagine this will be covered in PVC trim, all you'll see is just this part of the hinge. So it's fairly discreet. And then obviously when the doors open, it opens like that, you'll see the rest of the hinge. And then what I'll have to find is I'll have to find some small screws that will recess right into these countersinks because there is a possibility there. I've seen that if I have these screw heads proud, these are a little bit proud, there is a possibility that that could be sort of hinge bound and it might not close fully. I'll put a link in the description below of where I got these hinges from. If you want to buy something like this yourself, just use that link in the description. Let's get some masking tape on this board. We'll match up the grain pattern. We'll give ourselves an additional 20 mil all the way around and then we'll cut that new door out. Then we can router the slot, put the trim on and then attach those hinges. I've drawn the Sharpie line around that cutout. This is only on the plastic protection so it's not on the actual finished door. And then what we'll do is I'll put some masking tape around the outside of that so that we've got something to draw a new door on top of. It's just easier to see the pencil lines on top of the masking tape. So we've got our new line ruled 20mm outside of the old door size. I'm going to round off the corners with the same radius as I did for all the other doors. So within the van, all the radiuses look exactly the same. And all I did was use a small pot of paint. And then I just kept it consistent right the way through the van. Every time I needed to do a curve, I just used the same size tin of paint. And then what we'll do once we've cut the square out on the table saw, is I'll just round off these corners with my belt sander. I've got a special blade in the table saw. We swapped it out. Whenever you're cutting laminate, like this furniture board, it's best to have a blade with a lot of teeth. This is an 80 tooth blade. You can buy them. They are sometimes called laminate cutting blades. But basically, the more teeth you've got, the less chance of you getting a lot of tear out and it'll give you a much neater and cleaner cup. It's never a good idea to do a cross cut with a board or a plank of wood on a table saw because you can quite easily twist a bit of wood and then you'll get a really violent kickback off the blade. So if you're doing any cross cuts it's always best to use either the mitre gauge which usually comes with the saw or in our case we like to use this panel cutting jig. It was something that we made quite simply. It's one of the runners out of the mitre gauge screwed to the bottom of a bit of plywood and then on the back of that, we've got a piece of two by two batten screwed to the plywood exactly at 90 degrees to the blade. And then you can hold a piece of wood quite securely in the panel cutting jig. You've got something nice and firm to push against. So it's really steady going through the saw. There's no chance of you getting a kickback. The other good thing with the panel cutting jig is the edge of this panel jig is exactly on this side of the blade. So all I have to do is line my pencil mark up with the edge of the jig and I know that's where it's going to cut. So that's our door cut and squared up. All we need to do now is round off these corners. I'm going to cut the bulk off with the jigsaw and then we'll tidy them up on the belt sander. I'll just roughly take the bulk of the material away with the jigsaw before we use the belt sander. I 
just like to cut my tape away right on the line because I find that using the sander it doesn't sand away the tape and then you can't see exactly where you're aiming for so just by removing that I can now sand back to that masking tape this belt sander I built from scratch from plans from Matthias Wandel's site I'll put a link in the top corner of this video and a link in the description if you want a copy of his plans and you can build one yourself We've got to run the groove in the edge of the door to accept the PVC pushing trim. So we've got the slot cutting bit which is riding on this little ball bearing set up in the little trim router. The height to this cutting bit is exactly halfway through the thickness of this board. We're just going to run this slot. <laughs> I'm going to run the trim router around the inside of the door opening because we're also going to put the PVC trim on here. And what I've just marked up is the location of these hinges because what I want to do when I'm running the trim router around is I want to stop either side of these hinges because I don't want to cut a slot there only because I need to get this screw into this end grain here. If I router a slot there won't be anything for me to screw into. So I've just marked those on the tape here and as I'm running the route around I'll just stop one side and then start again on the other side. Hopefully you can see that there, we'll take a close up look at the hinge location. There's still plenty of wood there for me to get that centre screw in. And the same here. I always like to use a braddle to mark the positions of the screw holes. It just helps to break through the surface of this laminate and gives you a starting point for your screws. just marked a centre line. I like to start my trim from exactly from the middle of the door at the bottom. It's a bit colder today. This trim's a lot easier to work with when it's warm in the shop. I mean if it was really cold you can actually put this stuff in some warm water just to make it a bit more pliable. can use a mallet for this but be careful because this stuff marks really easy. Okay. And you want a really sharp utility knife just to make that final cut. And what I find is I've only cut it about a fraction of a millimetre long, peel it back, push the join in first and then press it home. And you'll see that what that does is that brings those two really nice and tight together. Because there's no adjustment on these hinges you need to be really precise where they're located so in order to mark them on the door, 
I'm going to mount them to the frame first. We only need to put those screws in just for the moment. I put a little bit of tape on the edge of the door here just so I can put some pencil marks on there where we need to remove the little bit of the rubber trim. Place the door where it needs to go and then just mark the hinges. We just need to mark where we need to trim a little bit of rubber away on this edge. So we just want to cut a little bit of this rubber trim away just so we can recess that hinge. Need to have a really sharp knife for this. That's just enough to recess that part of the hinge. Now we've got those recesses cut in the trim on the door, we can offer it back up to the hinges and then just with the Sharpie we can mark these screw locations. And then I can come back and just punch these with a braddle. I'll just put a couple of screws in just to show you what it's going to look like. There we go, so that's our finished door. Obviously we've got to put the trim around the opening, same as we did the door. So there's the back side. You can just see the back edge of those hinges. So there we go, that's the finished overlapping door with those cranked hinges. So you've got about a 20 mil overlap and obviously you can see the grain matches right the way through. So there we go guys, that's one way that you can construct the doors for your cabinet in your van conversion. You do have to be a little bit careful with setting out the hinges because they don't offer the adjustment like those kitchen hinges do. But I think if you plan it out like I've shown you, they will work first time. It does give a nice neat finish as well. The hinges are pretty well concealed behind that PVC push on trim. So from the outside, you know, you don't really see them too much. So I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Same as all my other videos. If you're looking to purchase hinges like this yourself, I'll put the links in the description below. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to come back to you as quickly as I can. And please do let me know if you're thinking of going to Camp Quirky next year because I'm really looking forward to meeting loads of you guys there. A huge thanks to all of you for all your support and thank you very much for watching. Cheers! Quick, the blood's rushing to the head. <laughs>